binders, Big Bird, and you didn't build that. Voting day is just around the corner, and here on Off Duty, we are showcasing the buzzwords of election 2012, looking at all the creative ways you gave the candidates zingers and blunders new life online, and talking to the political madmen who create ads around it all. And in case you're wondering who the celebs will cast their ballots for, well, we've tracked down some star-studded endorsements. I'm Wendy Bounds. Enjoy the show. Build that. Somebody else made that happen. What do you want me to tell Romney? I can't tell him to do that. that. Can't do that to himself. I'm sorry, Jim. I'm going to stop the subsidy to PBS. I'm going to stop other things. I like PBS. I love Big Bird. This is a bunch of stuff. Look, here's the deal. What does that mean, a bunch of stuff? Well, it means it's simply inaccurate. It's Irish. <laughs> it's Irish. It is. <laughs> we Irish call it malarkey. Thanks for the translation. No, we okay. Irish call it malarkey. <laughs> number of women's groups and said, can you help us find folks? And they brought us whole binders full of, uh, of women. You mentioned the Navy, for example, and that we have fewer ships than we did in 1916. Well, Governor, we also have fewer horses and bayonets. Now, the boss is all about Barack and Dirty Harry. Well, he's pulling for Mitt. Want to know who the celebrities are backing this year? Here's how a few have pledged their political allegiance. Let's vote for the man who got Osama. Forward and away we go. Let's elect President Obama to lead us for four more years. We need someone who could turn it around fast, and that man is Mitt Romney. There's not much time left in the future of our country is at stake. And the guy who created four million new jobs, that guy, President Obama and Michelle, are coming to my house for dinner. When you cast a vote for Barack Obama, you're standing up for those rights. We look to history. Our great country and freedom are under attack. This goes the end from the old red, white, and blue. wonder how the advertising pros turn the candidates' strengths, weaknesses, and slits of tongue into political fire? Well, next you'll hear from two madmen on how a powerful political ad comes to life. 
From Big Bird to You Didn't Build That, the American public has watched a raft of political ads this season capitalizing off of perceived speaking gaps by the candidates. But when it comes to politics and advertising, who are the minds behind the campaigns? Well, you're going to meet two of them right now. We we'll welcome Hank Scheinkoff. He's a Democratic strategist who's worked on uh, ad campaigns for Clinton Gore, among many others, as well as Paul Wilson. He is CEO of Wilson Grand Communications, right now working on congressional ads for Republican vice presidential contender Paul Ryan. Ryan. Welcome to both of you. Now, Hank, let me ask you first. The turnaround time for some of these ads seems to be instant. We hear something like, you didn't build that, or the Big Bird comment, and there's an ad before you can even log off the internet. How, how has that changed? It's pretty amazing. In 1981, for example, it took you a week and a half to get anything done. You'd shoot it and film, you'd have to edit it, and then you have to get it done. It would take forever. Now it's two and a half hours, and that's how it works. And you think there are basically three kinds of ads that are now sort of prevalent, political ads that are prevalent sure. in campaigns. What are they? Well, we've gone through three different periods. The first ads were really done for Dwight David Eisenhower's presidential campaign of 52. That had any value, and they were just rah-rah. And then it was, <laughs> I love you, you love me, where the candidate would go before the camera and get Get it done and then the next uh, period of time comes to Nixon which is I hate you you hate me <laughs> right. but let's hate the other guy more and then it kind of gets all mixed up we're gonna look at some ads that each of you both you and Paul have created yourselves in just a minute but Paul I want you to jump in here in general are there some key points that you think today uh, in our elections make a political ad effective well we're gonna find out which ones are effective but um, we've certainly <laughs> seen the trend and it's about 80 to 90 percent as we call them, negative ads, and they just proliferate everywhere. Uh, one of the super PACs I know for uh, Romney said they didn't make any positive ads in the entire primary season. So that's the big trend in political advertising. Just no nothing positive. Well, let's look at an, each, an ad created by each of you and, and explain what you were thinking, what your goal was. Um, the first one, Hank, you created in 1996 for Bill Clinton, Al Gore in their re-election bid. Uh, let's take a look at that right now. The Constitution. Presidents have used the power it gives them to protect our values. That's why the 42nd president is vetoing the Republican budget. Their $270 billion Medicare cut violates our duty to our parents. Their $30 billion education cut destroys opportunity. Cutting environmental protection, increasing taxes on working people hurts us all. That's why President Clinton is vetoing the Republican budget. Standing up for what's right for we, the people. All right, Hank, I'm struck by a couple of things there. One, you've got the feel-good mm -hmm. music in the background, but you've got a negative message kind of going sure. on. So talk, what, what was the strategy there? The, the strategy there was to re-invoke American values. Instead of seeing the, the, the activity around the budget as being one of politics, to put it in a context where people would understand, they would feel have very strong feelings about it. And I've always believed that emotions determine what voters will do. And here was a clear case of finding something very American, something very value-driven that would get them to pay attention. You know how that election turned out. All right, Paul, it is your turn now. You are working on ads for Paul Ryan and his congressional bid, which he is also running in addition to running uh, as the VP on, on Mitt Romney's ticket. Let's take a look at one of the ads you have yep. made for him this season. We have a critical choice to make as a country. We are on an unsustainable path that is robbing America of our freedom and security. It doesn't have to be this way. We can have real personal and economic freedom. We can turn this thing around. Real solutions can be delivered. Your representative must put the next generation ahead of their next election. But it will take leadership and the courage to tell you the truth. All right, Paul, I'm struck by two things here. One, uh, let's turn this thing around sticks with me, and it will take leadership and courage to tell you the truth. What were you going for with those buzzwords? Well, he's obviously saying you have to have somebody who will tell you the truth on the budget and the deficit and how much trouble we're in. And so we confront that right up front. We obviously can't go through the federal budget in 30 seconds. But what we're saying there in a very direct approach is there are some giant changes that have to occur. And if we don't make them, if we don't have the courage, then the country's going to be headed in the wrong direction. He does that by appealing to you in a very personal way. Is there any danger in general for doing a quick next day ad, uh, you know, or, or 48 hours later ad off of a perceived gaffe that a candidate makes in speaking? Well, uh, there used to be a penalty if you made a mistake. But now there's such a plethora of ads that you don't see the comeback ads as much. 
they have uh, fallen off the radar screen. And so you'll see an ad and you just move on to the next one. So I don't see it quite as uh, as dangerous anymore. Let's take a look at the Big Bird Romney ad, which of course came after Mitt Romney made comments about uh, cutting funding to PBS and then sort of as an aside said, now I love Big Bird, but, uh, and here was the ad that ran. Bernie Madoff, Ken Lay, Dennis Kozlowski, criminals, gluttons of greed, and the evil genius who towered over them, one man has the guts to speak his name. Big Bird. Big Bird. Big Bird. It's me, Big Bird. Big, yellow, a menace to our economy. Mitt Romney knows it's not Wall Street you have to worry about, it's Sesame Street. I I'm going to stop the subsidy to PBS. Mitt Romney taking on our enemies no matter where they nest. <laughs> All right. You get a chuckle, Hank, but you're a Democratic strategist. You didn't like this ad. Why? I don't think it's effective. I think it, uh, it speaks to a very small audience. And um, it's not gonna, it's, it, it doesn't really deal with the issue at hand. It, now, there was an ad cut by the Dukakis campaign in 1988, I think, that had a similar kind of tone where they had four guys in the room and they were in the control room talking about how they were going to manipulate the election. Nobody got it. Right. I wonder how many people really get that ad. Get if, it's not, if they weren't listening to the debate. If they weren't listening to the debate or they weren't clued in. They're just not going to get it. Although you'd have to not have been on social media at all not to have like heard about the Big Bird comment. There's a lot of people who aren't. Paul, quickly, uh, you weigh in on this one. Well, it's funny, cute, and fast, but uh, we call it a boomerang ad where they're actually talking about the message that Romney wants you to think about. And that is they're talking about, well, do we make these very tough cuts? And it's coming forward. So uh, it's coming to us in, uh, in a few months. So I think the ad actually spins around and, and bites you uh, for doing it that way. All right, last ad we're going to have you guys watch was a, an ad that came around Upwar made that uh, around comments that Obama made in a speaking engagement, uh, talking about how successful businesses rely both on the individual as well as sometimes public infrastructure. That came out with a "You didn't build that" comment. Let's look at that ad. The idea to say that Steve Jobs didn't build Apple, that Henry Ford didn't build Ford Motor. To say something like that is not just foolishness, it's insulting to every entrepreneur, every innovator in America, and it's wrong. President Obama attacks success, and therefore under President Obama we have less success, and I will change that. All right, Paul, you first, quickly. A lot of graphical representation there. What do you think of that? Uh, it, it's very graphic, very different. I kind of, I kind of liked it. I was there at the convention when he gave the speech, and so it has a feel of both very modern, but also old time radio. You get to listen to it and imagine what that speech was like. So uh, I liked the ad. I thought it, I thought it made the point. All right, Hank. Last word to you. Your opinion? Effective ad. Right to the heartland, right to where people have small businesses, right to their hearts. All right, guys, thank you so much for weighing in. We will see what happens on Election Day. Paul Wilson, CEO of Wilson Grand Communications, Hank Scheinkoff, Democratic Strategist. Thanks for joining us here at The Wall Street Journal. Thanks so much for joining us for this special edition of WSJ Off-Duty. I will see you next week, and don't forget to vote on November 6th.